SmackDown, though, is probably still at the forefront of everyone's minds today, at least a lot of you on social media. The fast overnight ratings were in for SmackDown on Saturday. They were strong once again. Uh, Spoiler TV released the numbers. It scored a 2.375 or scored 2.375 million viewers for the Fox network. The 18 to 49 year old demographic was 0.67. Full ratings figures for SmackDown are expected later on today. The show was a legitimate sellout at Madison Square Garden with WWE claiming over 15,000 people there. Whatever the true number was, it's the largest crowd that WWE has gotten at MSG since 2015. WWE has also announced that it's the highest grossing SmackDown episode ever, which I thought was last week at the O2 Arena, but I guess maybe they mean domestically, as well as being the highest grossing WWE event ever held at Madison Square Garden, and that dates back to 1960. A little trivial note. Uh, very likely. It it looks like it's going to be the last WWE show uh, held under the McMahon uh, operation as the sale of the company should go through by the end of the year to Endeavor, and they usually do that end-of-year Madison Square Garden show, and technically it will be the first one for WWE under new management when that happens. So SmackDown on, on Friday, I guess if you were hiding under a rock, and have tried to cover your ears. I I hate to do this to you, but we got to take a look at the biggest thing because, you know, arguably it was the biggest thing that took place in wrestling over the weekend. Don't yell at me. There's a lot of people that say that. I know you're saying, well, what, what about Collision? We'll get to Collision as well, too. But it's drama time with the bloodline. It's cinema, I've heard. It's drama. It's definitely drama. The Usos started the show by bragging on defeating Roman and Solo at Money in the Bank, but they got interrupted by Paul Heyman and Solo. Paul says that he serves as the defense counsel for the evening's tribal court proceedings. The Usos told him to shut up. Paul told them that, hey, only one person tells me to shut up. And then Solo grabs the microphone, walks to the other side of the ring, and throws it out without turning it off. I I did like that. People chanted for Solo. And that led to Roman's music hitting, and he dramatically walked out very slowly so he could begin his trial. And then we got a commercial break, and after that, it was time for Roman to soak in the chants of the crowd. And he said that Jimmy's not the tribal chief, and Jay isn't either, yet. And since he's the tribal chief, he's still the tribal chief, he didn't call for a tribal court. So he was wondering what they were all doing there. And I don't know either, because to be honest, I don't remember Samu or Fatu or Tama ever doing this. But okay, fine. The Usos say they're not going to be manipulated. And instead, they begin a video package of exhibits. Lots of chants from the crowd uh, that censors had to mute, which... You know, kind of takes away if you're you're watching at home. But, you know, the first one was filled with Roman being a jerk to everyone around him. Roman said that's not who he is, but he had to be that way. He then got upset and then went into full Brian Alvarez mode and tried to turn everything back around on, on all of them for making that video. He says he's a family man. He's got kids. He doesn't need this in his life. He doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the hassle. And he says he's done with all of it. And he tells Jay that if he wants to be the man, you know, okay, it's you, all right? And he tossed the mic away, and Roman got face-to-face with Jay, and he starts to get emotional, and he takes off the lay he has on, and he places it around Jay's neck. And then we got thespianism. Drama, acting is what we got. At least that's what I've been told. That's what people are trying to tell me when it comes to Roman, because he scrunched up his face. And he began to try to work up tears. And he rips off the Velcro with the title belt. That, which would be ridiculous. It is ridiculous, actually. It's just, uh, you know, I don't know if snaps would be any better. But there was a part of it that just, that made me laugh. Made me chuckle for some reason. But he takes the belt and throws it to the side. And Paul screams, no, in the background. And Roman drops to one knee. And, and like the, the, the fake Native American they used in the old public service ad for littering, One single tear falls down Roman Reigns' face. And Jay looks over at him and walks up and he puts one hand on Roman's shoulder to console him. And then Roman throws his arm up and lariats Jay right in the loins like he was Ric Flair. And 
Jimmy was so shocked by this that he froze for a moment and then went to lay in stomps on Roman that he didn't lay in at all. I mean, the guy has beaten you up. He's beaten your brother up. He has humbled and humiliated you at every opportunity in public. Lay the lay them in. Please stomp that man. At least, please stomp that man. But, of course, Solo then jumped in, laid waste to Jimmy. Solo then looked down in the ring, and he looked at Jay, and he looked at Roman, and Jimmy ran after him, and he thumbed him in the throat. Then Solo picked up the lay. Roman got to his feet. Solo stared at the lay. And he stared at the lay, and he stared at Roman. And Roman held his hand out for the lay, but he didn't put it in his hand. And as that drama was beginning to build and the fans were getting up on that again, Jay went and attacked both of them from behind. Eventually, Solo ended up putting Jimmy through the announcer's table, and that was the first 35 minutes of the show. I mean, we got from then we got back from break, and we got two more minutes of it, of, of Jimmy being loaded into an ambulance. Eventually, the show closed with a segment where Jay came back through the crowd to beat up Solo with a steel chair and then challenged Roman, who had bailed out of the ring, for a shot at the undisputed title. So... That was pretty much all of SmackDown, was was everything right there. Austin Theory also beat Sheamus to retain the U.S. title. Edge beat Grayson Waller. AJ Styles beat Karrion Cross, And Neo Sky almost cashed in the briefcase on Asuka during an interview segment, but Charlotte and Bianca also got involved. Take a look at AEW Collision, as well as everything else taking place in the world of wrestling when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Hey, make the wrestling news part of your day. Everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio. Daily, free, in between 5 and 15 minutes long. No clickbait, no speculation, no rumors, no paywall, just the wrestling news. For more information, head on over to WrestlingNews.com and at WrestlingNewsAV on Facebook and Twitter. Did it sound like I was making fun of the uh, the segment on SmackDown? I wasn't. I was poking fun at it. I got to be honest, I don't watch SmackDown Live. I rarely watch anything live. So everybody was fighting over whether this was cinema or not, or whether Roman deserves an Oscar or an Emmy or a Tony or a Grammy or whatever. All of them, you know, a Source Award, BET Award. I, I don't know, but... I got to be honest, I, I don't watch that much TV, but it, this was not an Emmy-winning performance. I'm, this wasn't even a daytime Emmy-winning performance. The people on The Young and the Restless would be very upset with many of you over you guys saying this stuff about Roman Reigns. But I didn't hate it, and I thought I was going to hate it. I looked at it, I, I heard some of the banter about it, and I'm thinking, this is going to be a Jump the Shark segment. Because, like, we're having this tribal thing. Like, it hasn't even been laid out. Like, okay, what is, is Jay trying to get from this? I mean, you beat him. Just ask for the match, for the title. Like, what is all the drama about? But then I stopped and thought, well, you know, what would this whole thing be without the drama? That's what people love about this. It's about the story. Now, they need to have matches as well, too. That's important. But the thing is... Whether you've liked the matches with Roman Reigns being involved and the Usos being involved against no matter who it is, it, no matter if you like the pauses so Roman could address the camera or do all that sort of stuff or, you know, have a, a full conversation as the the announcers sit out we have a full conversation between two guys in the ring you know bantering back and forth whether you you like any of that stuff or not it has been working for them and i did not hate this segment was it a little much for me yeah it was but i actually didn't hate it anywhere near as much as i thought i was going to thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again